hey, 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 Mr. Warlock, at your service. Here we are again, my friends. Just another math video. Woohoo! Yeah, I love math. I say that every time, but I get excited when I realize I'm going to be covering a new topic, a new concept. Woo! And this one, my friends, I think it's going to be a good one. And look what we're doing here. We are doing lesson 6.2. And, of course, we're looking at the topic of, I say, of course, like, yes, Mr. War, of course we're doing this. We're doing subtraction with unlike denominators. Cool. Now, our essential question. Again, this is our learning target. How can you use models to subtract fractions that have different denominators? And to put this in a student-friendly kind of thing, and you think of a learning target, you could say, I can use models to subtract fractions that have different denominators. And that ultimately is our goal of this lesson. Okay. Okay. We're good, Mr. Wara. Awesome. Now, this is an investigate. This means this is hands-on. You know, our purple hands. <laughs> I have to I have to say purple. They just look cool. Purple hands. It's a hands-on. So let's go ahead and take a look at our investigation, the problem that we're going to use. It states, Mario fills a hummingbird feeder with three-quarter cup of sugar water on Friday. On Monday, Mario sees that one-eighth cup of sugar water is left. How much sugar water did the hummingbirds drink? Very cool. I have a hummingbird feeder myself. This is, they are very cool. And I like this as like a rural, it's a real world problem, even though they don't state it here, but it is. I like that. Now look for the, our materials. It says that we're going to need fraction strips, which I still sometimes accidentally say fraction tiles. Same thing. And then you're going to need your math board. In fact, it's just what this young gentleman right here has. Look at him. Yeah, he's even putting, looks like a tile, a fraction strip right there on his math board. Very cool. Yes, I like it. Now, it's important that we use these manipulatives or even create them in a way on paper to help us solve math problems. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to A. A states find three quarters minus one eighth. Place three one quarter strips under the one whole strip on your math board. Then place a one eighth strip under the one quarter strips. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put mine on top here, just so I can kind of copy it. It's just because I want to do it because it's fun to use manipulatives. Yes, and then it says to place three one quarter strips. Well, here's one. I'm gonna put him here. One, two. Mine are very similar, almost the same size. Two, and then there's three. Yeah. Now I've done that. Now it says place one eighth strip under the quarter strips. Okay, I see that. One eighth. I'll put that there. Cool. I like it. Now it says find fraction strips all with the same denominator that fit exactly under the difference three quarters minus one eighth. Well, we could do a lot of different things. We could, first of all, I could try to grab this size and say, will he fit? I uh, no, Mr. Wara, you know what? <laughs> and no, uh, pull that one off. Okay. Sorry, it might make it easy to find that denominator that's going to work. Like in this case, we have the denominator of four, and then the number that we're subtracting has a denominator of eight. You know, last time I checked, I believe eight is a multiple of four. So I think in simplest terms, a multiple is just a number that when you multiply it by another number, it will give you that number. It's not similar to a product, except that what we're saying is, is if we find a multiple multiples of four, we're skip counting fours. We're going four, eight, 12, 16. Those are multiples of four. So that's like four times one, four times two, four times three. That's exactly what I mean. And in this case, I do believe eight is a multiple of four. So I'm going to see if eighths is going to work for me. So there's one. So I'm going to put in another one here. So I did use my one eighth uh, fraction strips and I can see that six eighths fits on my little model. Now I was subtracting one eighth, see, and that's where that one was right there, my one eighth. So that means if I had six eighths there, then I would have five eighths as the difference. So I'm going to put my five eighths. So the hummingbirds drank five eighths cup of sugar water which is basically what that is. There's sugar and some water and they love it. 
Now looking at the mathematical practices, the math talk, how can you tell if the difference of the fractions is less than one? Yeah, that's a really, really good question to put in there. Um, yeah, I think the easiest way here, and in this problem here, if we have a fraction like three quarters, if it's already less than one, then subtracting a number that is less than one gives the answer that's less than one. So if I have three quarters, I'm subtracting a number that is less than one, then I have to have a number that's less than one. There's no other way around that. We found that up that problem there that that's true because the difference of five, I'm sorry, the difference of three quarters and one eighth was five eighths. Cool. And I had address mathematical practices. So now we have draw conclusions. So it's describe how you determined what fraction chips all with the same denominator would fit exactly under the difference. And what are they? Is a similar question, if not almost the exact question that was in our previous lesson when we were looking at the addition of fraction strips and, and the denominator. And again, we always want to try the largest ones. You saw me do that. I was trying the large fraction strips and to see if it would fit exactly under okay, uh, the difference. And you can see that a lot of the larger ones did not work. One half did not work. And then I took smaller strips um, with the denominators whose strips fit exactly. Um, and that was the one eighth. And I also thought out loud about how finding the multiples of numbers can sometimes make it easier to get a denominator. So let me go ahead and put those notes down here. Okay, there is that explanation. And now it looks like that we're looking at mathematical practice five. Let's take a look at that particular mathematical practice. Mathematical practice five, we've covered this one before and I will keep covering these mathematical practices because they're important. This particular one says to use appropriate tools strategically Okay, I know when to use certain tools to help me explore and deepen my math understanding. We've talked about the idea of having a math toolbox, that you know how to use those math tools, when to use them. Okay, um, the important thing here is did the tool I use give me the answer that makes sense? And we have a lot of different examples from 10 by 10 grids and calculators and rulers and protractors. Obviously, there's a, just a myriad of tools that you can use to deepen that understanding. So using appropriate tools strategically. Now we can go back to our problem, or as I like to say, our regular programming. It says, explain whether you could have used fraction strips with any other denominator to find the difference. And if so, what is the denominator? Well, if it's actually about the appropriate tools, no, I can't think of any other fraction strips that would work. Because whether it's to say, explain whether you could have used fraction strips with any other denominator, no others would have worked. Because I tried a couple of them and they didn't work. And the ones that were listed there, uh, no other fraction strips would have fit. Okay, sure. Page master. Woohoo, yay. Wow, look at all the colors. I like that. Still, this is like a hands-on because we have the purple hands. Yeah. Sometimes you can use different sets of same denominator fraction strips to find the difference. All of the answers will be correct. Oh, okay. Solve. It says two-thirds minus one-sixth. So let's look at A. Find fraction strips all with the same denominator that fit exactly under the difference two-thirds minus one-sixth. They've already given us that those three one-sixths will fit right underneath there. So two-thirds minus one-sixth equals three-sixths. Now let's come to B. They're saying find another set of fraction strips. Okay, not the one-sixth, but we have to find another one. All with the same denominator that fit exactly under the difference two-thirds minus one-sixth. Draw the fraction strips you used. Okay, and we'll go ahead and put them in there. Well, I always like to see if I can't find the biggest. We always go to the larger ones first. So I'm going to go take the largest one, and that's one half. And this one half, oh my goodness, look at that. That looks like it's going to fit in there. Yeah, that fits in there exactly. It's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, so two-thirds minus one-sixth. In this case, the difference would equal to one-half. Perfect. Let's look at C. It says find other fraction strips, all with the same denominator, that fit exactly under the difference two-thirds minus one-sixth. Again, draw the fraction strips you used. All right, we tried one-half, so I guess I would take the next largest one. I'm looking at the quarters. Let's see what we can do with the quarters. Now bring him down. It's one quarter. Oh, look at that. Two quarters work. That fits nice. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and 
and write two quarters. Now what's interesting is three sixths, two quarters, and they both, they, they all equal one half. I'm just kind of wondering if there's any others because I'm looking up at another fraction tile up there and that looks like that one would work too. Let me see. The one eighth, because I thought we looked at this before that two of the eighths make one quarter. If we were to put this on top of the one half, and I'm pretty sure four of these will equal the one half. Yeah, they would. Look at that. So four eighths is also equal to one half. I don't know, maybe that's what they wanted me to write in here because they all equal one half. Let me see what the next. While each answer appears different, all of the answers can be simplified. There you go. So let's kind of clean this up. So this, even though that one half did work, let's put in four eighths here, as we've got listed here, and they all can be simplified to one half. I guess this is how, it's how they wanted us to do that. Does that all make sense to you? I think so. All right, let's move on down. Now, share and show. This is always the point of the video where I always say, you know what, just put it on pause, do your work independently. That way you can hop right back onto the video and just see how you did. It's a great way for you to do your own self-assessment, okay? Because only you are going to know if you put it on pause, right? No way for me to know. I encourage you to do that. Okay, now it says, use fraction strips to find the difference. Write your answer in simplest form. So we're looking at that and I'm gonna see what I can find is going to fit in that difference right there. Well, it looks like above, we're taking 7 tenths minus 2 fifths, but it looks like by just looking at the picture that the difference would be 3 tenths, right? The difference here is, is all we need to know, and that's going to be 3 tenths. So we really didn't have to figure it out. They're doing the work for us by putting a tenth there. Now we come over to question number two. A little bit different here now. We have a quarter, okay, so we have two thirds minus a quarter. We're trying to figure out what's going to go in there. You know, it's not going to be thirds. Thirds isn't going to fit. And by looking at that, I don't think quarters are going to fit. In this case, it looks like that we have, yeah, tenths aren't going to fit in there. Uh, oh, you know what? It's an opportunity of, to kind of think of the multiples. I don't think we actually, I don't think I have that fraction strip available because I'm looking at three and I'm looking at four and I'm thinking of the multiples. And the multiples of three are three, six, nine, twelve. And if I did the multiples of four, oops, I'm going to have four, eight, twelve. And so twelve I know would be a like denominator. It would be the same denominator because twelve is a multiple of four and then twelve is also a multiple of three. So, but based on this here, if that were to be true, then two thirds then would be equal to eight twelfths and one fourth would be equal to three twelfths. So if I have eight twelfths minus three twelfths, I'm going to get five twelfths, okay? I just don't have any fraction strip for the twelfths that I could, but five twelfths would fit inside that missing difference. So in a way, I just kind of quickly went to my use of multiples. And that is the next step as we explore with fraction strips that we're gonna start looking at multiples and that kind of helped me figure that out. Some of you may have wondered, how did I know that two thirds was equal to eight twelfths without using a fraction strip? I just used that little method to show that if that was true, that if I multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same amount, it will give me that eight twelfths. And that's all about equivalent fractions. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, my friends, it is, it is time. <laughs> Famous line from the Lion King. It is, it is time, my friends, to say, yeah, hasta la vista. It's been real nice, but it's time for us to go. It is time for us to say, it's time for me to wish you live long and prosper.